Greetings, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Blessings and peace to each of you. Pastor Dave and I would like to share some exciting updates related to worship that the council recently approved at our May council meeting. Based on the recent changes in CDC guidance to, related to social distancing and use of masks for fully vaccinated people, as well as the continued improvement in the COVID metrics, your council unanimously approved three separate motions. And I'm gonna walk through each one of those uh, now and explain to you what they are uh, so you start to get fam familiar with them. Uh, the first is that effective Sunday, May 23rd, uh, related to parking lot worship and sanctuary worship, masks will be optional for fully vaccinated people, as well as social distancing will be optional for fully vaccinated people. Uh, the second motion is that effective June 1st. Uh, this is related to the gathering room. Uh, that effective June 1st, uh, we'll be reopening the gathering room for all church-related functions. And similar to um, what we, the, the first motion, uh, masks as well as social distancing will be optional for fully vaccinated people. And then the third uh, motion that was approved will be effective Sunday, June 20th. Um, and that go relates to, we'll be going to three separate services. Uh, 8 a.m., there'll be a sanctuary worship. And then at 9.30 a.m., there'll be a parking lot worship. And then at 11 a.m., there'll be another sanctuary worship. Uh, we will continue to do live stream online worship. And we will also continue to have Holy Communion, uh, drive in Holy Communion between noon and 1 p.m. Um, and uh, masks, as well as social distancing, will be optional for fully vaccinated people at all of those different services. Uh, there'll be identical worship services throughout the summer, and adult faith formation will be suspended for the summer in order to be able to accommodate those three separate services. And this schedule anticipates returning to the pre-pandemic Sunday morning uh, schedules after the summer. Uh, of course, that's all dependent on uh, what happens with the numbers, and that's, that's a few months away, but that is the target, is at the end of the summer, we'll go back to the pre-pandemic schedules. Uh, I'll tell you, your council very enthusiastically uh, unanimously approved the three items uh, that we just talked about. Uh, we're very excited about it. We felt that this continues to do, uh, kind of goes along with the guiding principles that we followed all along throughout this pandemic to provide options to the congregation while being consistent with CDC guidelines that we've continued to follow all throughout this pandemic. I'll also say that reservations will continue to be required for sanctuary worship, and that'll help us to manage the number of people in the sanctuary to allow people to have that opportunity to social distance if they wish to do so. Uh, we will continue to monitor the COVID numbers as well as CDC guidelines and adjust our protocols accordingly if warranted. Of course, as of right now today, uh, the, the positive test numbers are down significantly. The 14-day trend is down about 30%. Uh, so things are continued to go in the right direction. Uh, I'll also say that offering multiple options to meet the needs of our congregation comes at a cost. I'm not gonna kid around about that. And one of those costs is it takes a lot of work to have four separate worship options every single Sunday. And as a result, the need for volunteers is probably greater than ever, uh, particularly for worship. So I would like to appeal to all of you that if you are able to volunteer in any way for any of the different Sunday worship options, that please reach out to a member of staff to find out how you can help. We would greatly, greatly appreciate it. Uh, one other note I'd like to share is, remember, there's a number of communication methods that we use here at LCR. Uh, one of it is the weekly, um, and that comes out every Thursday around 2 p.m. Uh, you can get it in your email. And uh, it's very important. We have a lot of important information in there. Please, if you don't get it now, reach out to the office and then uh, get yourself on that distribution. We also have flock note. You can get that email and text for all sorts of communication methods. And, uh, it's, it's really important, and we want to make sure that everybody stays up to date on uh, activities here at LCR. And with that being said, I'd like to hand it over to Pastor Dave, who's going to share a few words as well. Thank you, Dan. In the 10th chapter of Luke, Jesus tells three parables about being lost. One of them is the story of the lost sheep. You remember it? A hundred sheep in the wilderness, one of them gets stranded and goes off, and the 99 are left. And what does the shepherd do? The shepherd leaves the 99 in the wilderness and goes off to search for the one that's lost. That's how important every single sheep is to the flock of God, ladies and gentlemen. We are not target. 
We're not a restaurant. We're not a hospital. We're not the government. We're the body of Christ, and we try as best we can to model that shepherd's activity of caring for every single sheep in this part of God's flock. That's why consistently, as Dan mentioned, we have focused on options. We have focused on staging as a way to move us out of that, this pandemic, but in a way that cares for the needs of all of the sheep in this part of God's flock. I am very excited about the decisions that the council make, made. I look forward to even more of those decisions as we move forward. We are the body of Christ. I thank you for your partnership. I thank you for your patience. I thank you for your care. Because as the body of Christ, the call of the gospel is that we care not only for ourselves, we care for the needs of all God's sheep. Let us continue to do that in this place. Thank you.